Hello class. Today's homework is going to be about internal flow because week six we learned about internal flow and let me show you lecture notes. Still we are going to use the same heat sink. You had uh, different type of cooling for that heat sink. Now it is going to be uh, inside the wind tunnel to have an internal forced convection action over that uh, heat sink. So if I check the lecture notes, I'm going to select this type rectangular duct. And for rectangular duct, let's see what is the equations we have. So rectangular duct, you need to find a hydraulic diameter, which is 2 a times b divided by a plus b and then put inside Reynolds number formula uh, to get Reynolds number or if you have Reynolds number you can find the average velocity of the flow inside that rectangular duct for which are uh, which for our case is our wind tunnel okay uh, I would like to have a laminar flow and for the laminar flow, we know that if the Reynolds number is under 2300, it's going to be fully, it is going to be laminar. So, uh, let me show you what I'm going to do. Let's start with drawing. This is my um, wind tunnel and heat sink with four pin fins over it. Let me uh, show you how I did the, how I draw this heat sink and then later I'm going to go back and use this one because I already simulated and finished everything and I'm going to show you. So let's see what I did for, for this drawing. So I start with top plane. and draw a sketch this is for the heat sink base extruded then i draw some circles like this i make sure they have same uh, diameter extrude that one too and uh, merge them and I also I turned on the draft option with 8 degree to have uh, a little bit pointy uh, fins up, up to this stage I'm sure you know that pointy ones are going to be better than the uh, fins with constant uh, diameters. Okay, this is the heat sink part. For the fluid part, I select this surface and draw a plane above, for example, this distance. Then let's go perpendicular to that surface and draw exactly a rectangle over it and you remember from the previous homework if you want to extrude this up to next which is going to fill the area between pin fins you must have one uh, part here if you had several parts it's not going to work so let's extrude wrong direction change the direction, select the type to up to next, so automatically it's going to fill everything except the area we have uh, pin fins not merged, so I'm uh, clicking this one to avoid merging and uh, yeah, done. So I let me make this transparent. So 
So now we can see we have air and heat sinks there. Usually wind tunnels they are longer and we want to see what is happening for the heated air or the cooled air after heat sink or before heat sink. So I need to extend this. To extend this, uh, let's click here and draw a rectangle here and then extend. Or I go to a sketch and click this convert entities. It is going to automatically generate this uh, edge as a sketch for me. Now let's extrude to some degree. Make sure it's not merged and done. So this is going to be added to the air, fluid or air we have at the set. Let's do for the, the other side too. So a sketch, activate the sketch part, convert entities. So I have 2D a sketch drawing for this side. Let's extrude it and not merge that one. So it's ready. Okay, great. So now the next step is going to be adding this three parts of air to each other. To do that, you need to come and select command here and type combine. So combine is ready. From here, let's select the first cannot be selected. Okay, let's select this, this, and let me ex extend this. Okay, now I selected three air drawings which were separate. Now I'm going to combine to each other using this add and combine. Okay. Now it's everything is ready. I have my heat sink and my fluid area. And the fluid area, if I hide this, these two parts, if let's uh, make transparent or hide. You can see there is a hole inside my uh, fluid part. So let's bring back everything. Okay. Now I'm going go back to my original drawing. So this is my original drawing, the same procedure. Uh, before going further, I need to know the size here because as, as I showed you, I need to know the this length and this length to calculate hydraulic diameter to be able to have a laminar flow. And if I had hydraulic diameter D, I know what is the uh, viscosity for air. I know, for example, Reynolds number because I want to have uh, laminar flow, let's consider Reynolds number is going to be about 2000. So I can predict what is the average velocity for my inlet. So to find that, you need to go to evaluate and measure. Find this length. It's 105 millimeter. And this length is 87 millimeter. So uh, I'm going to write it here. Hopefully it's going to be easy to write. So hydraulic diameter is going to be uh, 
2 times a times b divided by a plus b. For the dimensions I had, which was uh, a was 0 0.0 0.087 meter and B was uh, 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.5 uh, this hydraulic diameter is going to be point zero nine five one meter. So let's consider Reynolds number is two thousand because it's less than uh, two thousand three hundred, so it's going to be laminar. So two thousand and it is supposed to be equal velocity hydraulic diameter divided by mu divided by rho so uh, I know that mu for air I, I looked from uh, from ANSYS let me write down ANSYS says mu is uh, 1.7 for air 1.789 times 10 power minus 5. Density for air answer says it's 1.225, 1 1.225 velocity I want to find and I just find hydraulic diameter is 0 0.0951 and this is going to give me velocity about point three meter per second. So if the velocity is 0.3 meter per second, inside my wind tunnel I'm going to have laminar flow. Okay. So let's import this into the ANSYS. So basically you're going to right click and import and browse it. I saved that file as an IGS file and import it there. Then let's open mesh part. Okay. As we expected, we have two parts. Part one, which is the solid part. You can change, rename this later not to make a mistake. And part two for the fluid or air. I, I also need to check connections. If the drawing is correct, I need to have connection between uh, heat sink, the, the pin fins of heat sink and air. Let's see. Yeah, this is all the pin fins and the surface of the uh, heat sink and I have a connection with the bottom side of the air so later I can couple these two and conduct it from the heat sink to the air conduct and convect it so this is correct I just used the default mesh definitely this is not enough you need to have much finer mesh but yes for this case it's good then I start naming 
different parts because you need to assign boundary conditions and naming is going to be make it very easy this is the inlet surface outlet is going to be the other side and a hot surface at the bottom for the these walls side walls of the uh, uh, wind tunnel I don't want to include in my boundary conditions uh, that is why I don't I didn't put any name automatically uh, ANSI is going to consider as the adiabatic uh, surface or zero heat flux surface and uh, if you, you are doing some experiment and you're comparing your numerical results with the experimental and you saw some there is a uh, some difference between the temperature you are simulating and the temperature you are using from getting from the uh, experiments so what you do one of the solutions is you can come back to the geometry you have and consider uh, convection for the sides of the uh, wind tunnel basically you're increasing the accuracy of the boundary conditions because definitely your wind tunnel is going to have some convection and can and convect heat to the outside or again your temperature inside this uh, over the heat sink is is not uh, very close to your experiments and for example your your uh, experimental temperatures are much lower than the um, simulation maybe if you consider radiation for the heat sink your heat sink uh, if it had a radiation you're going to lose some temperature so your experimental results and the numerical result may get closer okay these are the options you have to add your boundary conditions to have much more accuracy definitely you usually need to have some experiment to compare those things otherwise the the inlet and outlet and the heating part would be enough okay let's close this and open setup double precision and parallel solution Okay, every information from the meshing part is loaded to the fluent. I consider it as a steady state. As you can see, I haven't turned on gravity because when we have a force convection, gravity is going to be negligible. Let's go and check models. Uh, you, you must turn on energy to have temperature viscose uh, model is laminar because I intentionally designed this uh, simulation to have a laminar flow otherwise you need to go select other uh, uh, models for turbulent simulations next part is going to be materials for this again I'm going to use default material aluminium for the heat sink and the uh, air as a fluid cell zone condition now you can see part one and part two you should remember part one was the solid if you rename in the this part one and part two in the mesh part now you could see have a better uh, names and selecting the type of uh, uh, cell zone would be easier but I remember part one was solid so I select solid part two is fluid so it's fluid and uh, automatically because I have just one fluid and one solid when I select fluid it is going to be air let's check it it is air for part one when I sele select solid it's going to be aluminium if you add more materials more solids or more, more fluids you are going to have a list here to select okay let's check boundary conditions 
for the button of heat sink, I consider heat flux, constant heat flux. So let's open it and check what heat flux I decided. Okay, so it's a constant heat flux and it's 10,000 watt per meter square. It's a little bit high, but yeah, it's a, uh, this is just showcase. So 10,000 watt per meter square. For inlet, it is going to be velocity inlet. Now I need to assign velocity. Velocity magnitude based on my calculation here is supposed to be 0.3. So I put 0.3 to definitely have laminar flow. And also I need to say what is the uh, inlet temperature. So inlet temperature is supposed to be 25 degree, which is room temperature. For outlet, ANSYS fluent automatically decided pressure outlet, which is good. And again, I need to make sure the, term, the thermal part, the outlet also is 25 degrees. So both sides, inlet and outlet in a room with 25 degree temperature. The rest, I don't care. And we don't need to take care of that part. For the contact region, you need to take care of this one to make sure it's coupled well. Solution method, simple, grade, uh, for the gradient least square cell base, pressure is second order, second order, second order. So I'm not touching anything here. Then let's initialize as a hybrid. And then for calculation, I decide to have 1,000 uh, iteration. You can have less, uh, I don't know, 115 or 500, anything you want. And let's go and check our solutions. OK. The first one I'm going to show you is temperature counter. To draw temperature counter, I draw two plans perpendicular to the uh, z-axis and perpendicular to the x-axis. Now I can see, let me, okay. I have an inlet on the right side, an outlet on the left side. We can see that when we, uh, the airflow hits this side, we have a hotted air between two fins. And uh, the highest temperature is about 600 degree, which is very high. And uh, I'm supposed to have much smaller um, heat flux, maybe instead of 10,000, 5,000 uh, watt per meter square. And the lowest temperature is 25 degree because I decided to have uh, 25 degree. And uh, let me double click to show you. I selected the range local to show you the local range, which is between uh, 24.5 because the mesh quality is not good enough. So that is why instead of showing exactly 25, it shows 24.5 and the maximum is uh, 500. Uh, 93 degree and as, as as you can see I needed to extend air even further on the left side to have the heated air captured further uh, on the left side to see what's going to happen there so it's not maybe it's not uh, long enough instead of having extra uh, simulation area here I need to have like a twice or three times longer uh, air simulated under this side. Okay, S what about the, this axis? Again, as we expected, uh, we have a hot uh, area inside fin and then the area between is, uh, outside is we have hotted air. Maybe I could move 
this a little bit too much. Yeah, now it's inside fin. Now you, let's in, that is interesting to see we have temperature gradient inside fin. High temperature at the base and gradually temperature decreases and you know we expected that behavior in the fin. Okay, this is one of the results I extracted. Let's turn off. The second result is for pressure over the plan 1 and 2 again. As we expected, in, for the first uh, pin fin, we have high pressure here because it's uh, uh, the impact point and we have a stagnation point here. For the second fin, it's a bit lower, but still we have uh, stress, uh, high stress area here and low stress behind the fin. And you can see the same pressure gradient over the these two fins. Okay, this is the pressure. So uh, for wind tunnel studies, we usually find pressure difference between uh, at inlet and outlet to see what is the pressure drop. This is one of the very important aspects of the heat sink design. So you read pressure for example here, where is it? Pressure at that point is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 Pascal. And then Okay, I don't know why I can't read. Maybe I need to close this and then. Okay, now it's working. So pressure after heat sink is uh, 0 0.002 Pascal. Pressure before heat sink is 0 0.5. Then you can see, okay, this design for heat sink has this pressure difference or pressure drop. Then later you, you can design an uh, other heat sink, for example, having a hole inside the fin to increase uh, temperature, to increase the surface area and decrease the, this pressure drop. Because when you have a high pressure drop, the fan positioned here is supposed to be uh, has a higher power to be able to provide enough airflow against this pressure drop. Anyway, so let's go back to the next one. The third one, it's very interesting. So what I did, uh, let me show you first isosurface. I decided to uh, create isosurface, which, which is from here. When you double click this, you're going to have isosurface. And I said, show me isosurface for temperature at 400 degrees. So this is the isosurface or the surfaces which we just have uh, fluid at 400 degree. So you can see the first one we have less but because we have more fluids here and the heated flow from the first one, second one, third one is accumulating here. So the last um, uh, Pin fin is going to ha be a little bit hotter and uh, the first one is going to cool down faster because we have hotter uh, fluid around this. So this is the uh, ISO surface uh, for the 400 degree temperature, which is very interesting. You can change this to other degrees. And then I draw a counter and I said I want to read pressure for counter number three. 
I want to read pressure, but where? Over that isosurface. Now I'm adding information to that isosurface. So I want to see if I had, for the area I have, for area of the air, I have 400 degree, what is the pressure variation inside that? So if I turn on, you can see, this is exactly the area I have air with 400 degree temperature, and the pressure variation over that just isosurface is presented. So you can see I have high pressure here and low pressure air with at high at uh, 400 degree also is presented, which is a much more informative uh, presentation. We can add uh, streamline to this. From the right to left, we have air velocity, and you can see uh, gradually velocity increases at this area, and then again decreases. Because of the uh, area between these two fins are decreases, and we have something like a venturi effect here, so area decrease, velocity is supposed to increase because we have conservation of mass. Okay, that's it. And hope you hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.